Hi there MotoGP fans, welcome back to the channel. We are here today at Silverstone for I believe round 13, I think I think it is. We're going to go ahead and load our setup. Where are we? Here we go. We're going to go and load our setup. Got a good setup again I believe. The bike feels good. So if you want to see the setups, I will create this one as a short again and release it and add it into the playlist for setups. I'll leave the card above if you want to go and have a look at some setups and try them out. The setups will be slightly different if, if you choose to ride a bike out of the managerial career mode because of course the development is different, the frame is slightly different as it isn't as developed as a factory bike. So just be aware of that, the gearing will probably want slightly adjusting as well so just be aware of that guys when you try these setups but please let me know how you get on with them please let me know if they work for you uh, setups are very specific to you as a rider they are different depending on your riding style so please don't be surprised if it doesn't work for you guys it does depend on your riding style and it does depend on how you feel with the bike okay Tire choice this time around, we're going to go with a soft and a medium on the front and we're going to go out on a full tank of fuel and we're going to go straight out to track and we're going to crack on with this race. Let's go. So some of the guys there are on a full medium, Jack Miller's on full mediums. Your arm is on softs, so a bit of a mixed bag. Vizioso is on a medium soft, we're on a soft medium, so a bit of a mixed bag out there. I think our tyre choice works for us. The riders are on the Silverstone starting grid and are ready to face one of the most demanding Grand Prix of the whole year. You're not wrong there, Keith. It's very demanding. I'm not really a fan of this track, but let's get up into first gear, power mode 2, and let's see if we can get off to a good start. We did qualify first, we've got Vignales right at the side of us, but this is the corner, it all happens in this corner, can we get round there quickly? We shut the door on Vignales there, which was exactly as we planned it, because this is our fast section. So if we can get round here, we should be able to make a break for it. But then we're slowing in the second section, we're really slow. So we need to make a break. Vignales is behind us now, point two. We're going to stay in power mode two. Oh, a bit slow leaning in there. It's a bit too fast into that corner. We're on a full tank as well, you've got to get the bike stopped here for this first corner, get it in tight, can't run too wide there, on the flip-flop. I think in terms of the setup, it, it's the thing that's hard with this track is, it's got long straights, it's got slow fast corners, but it's also got the tight twisty corners like that S as we've just gone through there, the flip-flop. But we're managing to hang on to the lead at the moment. Oh! Oh! Vignales just smacked into the side of us there. We just managed to stay on the bike, but that's all I'll say. We are slow in some of these sectors. The Ducati doesn't handle it very well. Quattuaro has now taken Vignales into second place. That's probably down to us. Oh! I'm looking at the timing sheet there and we've gone wide. Oh. <laughs> we've took Quattro again, doesn't manage to stick it up the inside. We do take different lines on this track. I think with the Ducati we just have to do it. Otherwise we never make it round. Oh, gone wide again, it's such an horrible corner. I hate this track. I'm not very good on this track at all guys, I sort of struggle with it. <laughs> so we had a bit of drama there didn't we? Power mode 2 as well, we need to come out of that. I nearly forgot about that with all the excitement, so we've got 4 laps now in the tank. Oh. 
my going? Oh. oh my god. We got so wide there. There's Potuara again. Okay. We need to focus a little bit, settle down. This is actually the worst, the worst lap I've done in the history of going around this track. Stick to the inside of Quattraro there, see if we can get the drive out. Use this drive. Oh, we've got Vignales there as well. Oh, Vignales, what are you doing? Quattraro's looking behind him. Because we're in power mode one now, we're dropping off the pack a little bit. Vignales takes a shortcut on that corner, I'm sure he does. If we can get our lines right, we should be able to win this race. Come on, Quattraro, let's have you. It's the way we're fast. It's the way we're fast, really. Yeah. Whoa! Though we nearly had lift off there. I just find it so hard to be smooth on this track. It's my own track as well. I should be terrible that I'm not very good at it. Front tyre is cold though, isn't it? That's a bit better. Maybe we're settling down a bit now. We've got a bit of white space behind us as well, so we've started to create a bit of a gap. Bit better. That's a bit better. So tight and you're so slow, you can't have the bike height too high on this track you want to because you've got some fast sweeping bends but then you get a really tight twisters so you've got to watch your bike height if it's too high it won't like it very much it won't be stable enough to go around the tight twisters I think we're making a bit of a gap now behind us now we've slowed down strangely I've slowed down and we're pulling a gap slowed down in terms of calm down Rear tyre is nice and warm, the front is not so warm. Let's have a look at those temps. 81, look, 82 on the front. We did put a soft on it, didn't we? Whoa! Maybe that's why I can't get the bike stopped so much. We'll see if we can generate a bit of heat in it by only using the front brake. Rear tyre is okay, happy with that. So as we're recording this guys, it, it is the second round of the GPs, the real GPs. The one thing that has stood out to me so far is the Prilia. The Prilia bike is all new, of course, new frame, new engine, new swing arm. It's pretty much a new bike. Um, it seems to be paying off at the moment. The Spargro. I think this time round, as we record this at the second round of Qatar, has qualified, I think, eighth or seventh place on the Aprilia. And I like that bike as well. I've got an Aprilia myself, I've got an RSV 1000R. Crazy bike, tons of torque, rips your shoulders out. So with two seconds, nearly three seconds in front, so they've really, really tailed off at the back of us. I'm not sure if they've got any problems there, but we're doing okay. We're in power mode one. 
Only using the front brake now, try and get some heat into that tyre. But yeah, as I was saying, so in GPs the Aprilia is quite impressive at the moment at Qatar. Spargaro is, seems to have actually taken to the bike quite well, he's enjoying riding it. The bike looks great and I'm hoping to do well. We might even get a podium. If they get a podium this year, that's a serious improvement for Aprilia. And they can start to build on that for next season. But did anybody see the first round at Qatar? Did anybody see the Ducatis either pulled off from the line? God, that was insane, wasn't it? Let me know, guys, if you watched the GP's first round at Qatar. Let me know your thoughts. But those uh, Ducatis all pulled off from the line. And there was an interview afterwards with uh, Jack Miller, and he was saying that the old shot device on the Ducati is not entirely all responsible, fully responsible for the way it gets off the line. He was saying that, you know, it's down to reaction times as well of the riders. Uh, and Hodgson sh shrugged it off and said, he, you know, he's not, he, not going to believe that. <laughs> he's not going to believe that all of the Ducati riders all had a faster reaction time to uh, the lights going out at the Qatar race. He said it is, it, it is pretty much down to that old shot device that's on the Ducatis. We're getting a bit of movement on the back tyre now. But we seem to have settled down just a little bit into this race. We're managing to hold off Vinales now and Quattraro. Uh, Quattraro in, in second place of course behind us. But we're just taking it easy now. We're managing to keep that gap, maintain the gap behind us. As we go around the loop at turn 14. Two seconds behind, so we dropped, uh, we're giving them a little bit of time back. As we go around Brooklands at turn 16, then into Luffield. into Woodcote, blasting it through Woodcote on turn 18 for the final lap. 1.9 litres of fuel in the tank, so our fuel has been managed well, tyres have been managed well, there's not a lot left on that back tyre, but we're managing it well. Try the setup guys, go to the link in the description, try this setup, let me know how you get on. Can I, the bike feels good, the problem is with this track of course is it is bumpy in some areas so you've got the soft, smooth areas of this track. Whoa, as we go wide. And then you've got some really bumpy areas in some of the deep corners. And you've got to manage the suspension in a way, you've got to get it, you've got to fine tune your suspension so that it doesn't spit you off when you hit those bumps or lose traction over the bumps. So it's a bit of a fine line, but I just managed to... I went into time trials to do this, to get a, a setup to start with, because um, I knew this would be a, a tricky track. It's a little bit of cheating, I guess, because I had a base setup before I went into free practice and then I fine-tuned from there for this bike but it is a good setup if I say so myself hopefully it works for you guys 2.3 seconds then in front so it looks like we've got this race wrapped up and in the bag which gives us 25 more points just to increase our lead Mark Marquez I'm not sure where he is didn't really see I'm not really seeing him on the board at all Here we go, over the line.
Oh, he's happy with that, isn't he? Before going to the podium awards ceremony, let's take a look at the final MotoGP race results. So Mark Marquez was third then, so we come first. We didn't even have the fastest lap, but we... Oh, did we? Let's have a look. Who got, who got best lap? The Corona. 159. Wow. So we was on the two deads, but um, we did win the race. That's all we needed to do. A second place Potuaro. Marquez in third. Vinales eventually came fourth with Morbidelli in fifth. So let's have a look at the Riders' Championship then. So 230 points now we are. 61 points in front of Quattuaro, who's moved up one place with 169 points. Now ahead of Mark Marquez, who's now trailing 62 points and moved down one place. Jack Miller still in fourth with Maverick Vinales in fifth. If we miss two races, then we've still got a good chance of winning this championship. So we'll bear that in mind as we go through the remaining races. If I think we've got six races left, I think. Team Championships, Patronus, SRT are irremovable from that first spot. But we've moved up another place into third. Constructors, again Ducati, Lenovo team, I've never moved from this spot. But it's meeting our race goal, we're in the top ten, taking first position. Over to the podium then. Undoubtedly, it was a perfect day for him. In addition to the victory, his position also earns him 25 priceless championship points. It was a very intense weekend. Come for the riders who put their talent on show to celebrate with such an exciting race these three guys deserve the applause of everyone under the podium so our reputation points are still going up there we're meeting all of our team objectives and we got a position bonus as well of four and a half thousand points. Contract obviously secure. Race credit for first position. So we've got full credits. Research, I think I think we completed all our research as well in the free practice sessions. So let's head over into the office then and see what we can do. This was going to be a double episode. I chose against it because uh, we've got a bit on this week. Myself, we work Easter weekend as well, this is. So. But we definitely want to be finishing this before the 22nd of April when we get MotoGP21. So if you haven't already done so, guys, subscribe to the channel now. Hit that notification bell because on the 22nd of April, I get the new game, hopefully. And we'll be starting a new managerial career in that game. But let's have a look at research data, see where, where we can focus engineers now. So our engine development, we've got a new engine development part now. So let's get aerodynamics done. Let's move our engine guys over to aerodynamics and let's get this completed. I think, where's our aero guys? Let's, let's put these guys back. Two weeks now for that. Go on Nelson, you go. So that's one week now for the development process. So we can leave those guys there. Let's move back to the frame and let's move the remaining guys over to the frame see if we can move this along a little bit see if we can get some real developments done only two weeks for the frame now oh I don't want to do that didn't want you over there I wanted you over there so I think that's it we can't increase that anymore two weeks left for the frame so we're going to get a few developments coming up towards the end of the season so we might have to increase the AI level slightly so we don't have a boring race like that one was ultimately but we can let's move our guys back over to electronics now our electro boys let's get them back on the job so they can continue their work who else have we got? Was there anybody else? We've got 100 in, yeah, Nelson. So four weeks left for electronics. Let's see if we can add the engine boys on there as well. 
see if that helps bring that down five weeks that's interesting Add stuff uh, four weeks let's add these engine boys over there four weeks three weeks so all the engine boys are over there now so in fact now our development is really coming on so to recap then frame we've got a couple of weeks left on there aerodynamics we've got three weeks and electronics we've got three weeks so we've got some really good development coming up over the next few weeks so let's go and have a look where we are in the calendar now then advance to the next week week 38 so let's do that we should reduce those weeks by one so one week left for the frame before we head off into Mizano which is our next race guys so I shall see you in Mizano for the next episode so I'll head off into the FP sessions get a good setup and uh, I'll meet you back on the grid for that race so I'll see you there guys thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so hit that notification bell and share this video and give it a like guys and I'll see you in the next episode Look after yourselves. Bye bye. What's happening, motorcycle fans? Tuning in. We're here in Mizano to bring you the start of a week leading up to the long.